I have both the 16 inch M1 Max and the 14 inch M1 Pro. And I wanna do some video editing tests because I haven't seen results or tests quite like this. So stick around and let me explain. Hi there everyone, this is Mike from Tech Car Moon. And on this channel, I talk about Apple tech and Apple related tech. So make sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you get updated. So on the left here, I've got the 16 inch M1 Max, and this is the 32 core GPU and 10 core CPU. And here I have the base model 14 inch MacBook Pro, which has the M1 Pro chip, and that's the eight core CPU and 14 core GPU. So what I've done here is I've loaded the same project on both models and we're using external uh, hard drives just so then there's no uh, ambiguity regarding the drives. They're both exactly the same Sabrent Extreme Q drives and we've got the Apple Watch Series 7 unboxing video and what I've also done is I've added some titles, uh, track titles to kind of test out different things regarding the uh, Final Cut Pro. As you can see, in terms of the quality playback, we're on better quality, and this has got a mixture of 10-bit 422 codecs, as well as 8-bit 420 codecs, all right? So if we play them both back, as you can see, both of them do basically the exact same job. There's no drop frames on either. Both are handling it absolutely fine with the 10-bit 4K footage with no issues. In terms of pausing and playing, they're both doing a fantastic smooth job on both. Now, if we have a look at the playback on a tracked effect, so as you can see over here, it's tracking the actual watch itself. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna track this part of the watch and I'm gonna see which one is quicker, the 14 inch or the 16 inch when it comes to Final Cut Pro's built in uh, tracker. So three, two, one. Okay, so that's interesting. The 14 inch actually got away quicker than the 16 inch, which was really strange. Okay, so the 16 inch looks like it's won despite its slower start, but the 14 inch is only a few seconds behind it, which again, for the price difference of these two, and this is quite a long tracked clip, right? This is, uh, how long's this? One minute and 52 seconds. So you're not gonna typically be doing that kind of tracking, even a two minute track. Both of them were phenomenally fast, even though the 16 inch was quicker, it was by a few seconds. Could it be using the 16 core neural engine? Potentially, yes, hence why we're not seeing a difference. So now I'm gonna do a render test just to see how obviously it renders out this 12 minute and three second video. Now this has got a mixture of different types of footage. So it's mainly 4K footage. This is a 4K multicam uh, video, YouTube video. It's got tracked effects, it's got titles, it's got motion track titles, it's got, you know, call outs, you name it. It's it's basically got it. It's got a heavy color grade, as you can see over here. It's got what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I mean, it's got seven layers of stuff to kind of get this footage where it needs to be. And yeah, it's a pretty intense, uh, you know, YouTube video. And if you are someone that's got four cameras and you, you know, you want to see obviously how it performs in terms of a render, this is going to be a great video for you. Now, I will say that when it comes to the video editing experience, both handle this footage and tracked and playing that back and even transitions and stuff like that. Both played it absolutely fine. I saw no issues uh, with playing back transitions, which I had a slight problem with the 14 inch, uh, with the MacBook Air, sorry, uh, M1, had a few issues with it playing back with transitions. I would see the transition part stutter, so I'd have to sort of background render that uh, section. But with this, it's like, I don't render anything at all, as you can see, nothing's been rendered at all. And yeah, it just plays back pretty much anything I throw at it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to export this in H.264 and then H.265, and we're gonna just see what the differences are between the two models. So as you can see, both in H.264 4K with you know the same color space and audio formats and, and stuff like that. Three, two, one. Okay, so the 16 inch is almost done. There you go, so that was three minutes and 35 seconds. So definitely very, very quick for, uh, yeah, this kind of footage. Like by far the fastest times 
I've ever seen. And on the 14 inch, we're at 66%. So we'll let this one render and see what time this finishes at. And stop. Okay, so that was five minutes and 43 seconds. So basically two minutes faster. So about what, 40-ish percent faster on the 16-inch MacBook Pro over the 14-inch. So that's that's quite a big uh, difference. Now, in the real world, would five minutes, 43 seconds make a huge difference over three minutes and 35 if you're constantly doing this work? I mean, it all does add up, but again, it's 1,200 pounds in terms of differences, and you're saving yourself basically two minutes. And it's not like five minutes is slow. However, three minutes, 35, you can't argue with that. I mean, that is really, really fast. And if I had added more effects or, and this was a longer video, potentially, obviously the differences would be much larger. So there's, there's definitely some purpose for going for the 16 inch, but again, you have to decide whether it's actually worth that time saving for the £1,200 difference between these two models. And the last test we've got is HEVC. So we're using compressor and we're going to reset the timer. And three, two, one, start. So while it's doing the render, let's check out the CPU usage and GPU usage. So uh, on both, it's using about the same, probably what between 65 to, to 70 on the GPU and CPU on here. Looks like it's not being as utilized as on the fourth on the 16 inch, which is interesting. And let's check memory usage. So memory, we're sat at 13 gigabytes and on the 16 inch, we're sat at 16 to 17 gigabytes. So it's actually using a little bit more RAM to do the same process. Okay, so that's done on the four, uh, on the 16 inch and that took three minutes and 41 seconds. So basically identical to the H264, which is pretty impressive. and done. So that was six minutes and 25 seconds. So that was considerably longer actually than, than, than expected or you would have expected. It, it is quicker. However, like I said, um, when you're talking between three minutes and six minutes, realistically throughout a whole workday, when you're editing a whole video, whether it be in one day or over two days, would a three minute difference really make you know, <laughs> the biggest difference to you. And, and I'll explain actually at the end of the video how you could actually gain those savings back at a fraction of the cost. So I'm gonna open up a different project and this is gonna be to do with 3D tracking. So I actually haven't seen anyone doing this test or or maybe it is out there but I definitely haven't seen it so this is going to be really important for you guys out there that like to do drone shots or, or stuff like that not just uh, normal tracking or motion tracking but actual 3D uh, motion tracking. So this is going to be fantastic for you guys. So as you can see, I'm using the M Tracker 3D plugin by Motion VFX. So this is a very popular plugin. And as you can see, I've got a few motion tracked effects at the bottom. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to press uh, play on both and see if we are getting any skipped frames. So both are playing it smoothly with no issues whatsoever. I do have the drop frame indicator running and yeah, obviously not dropping frames at all. So what I'm now gonna do is I'm gonna activate a few more at the same time. Okay, so we're just gonna check the, the, the tracking performance in a moment, but we're just gonna see how the playback performance is on both. So three, two, one. And as you can see, both drop frames almost at exactly the same point. I mean, this one drop frames at 12, this one drop frames at two, 14 frames in, but I mean, yeah, if it, if it can't play it in either, then it, it can't play it in either, right? So now let's deactivate the bottom two and let's see how it can handle those. 
Okay, so let's try that again. So three, two, one. And again, both can't do it, even though this one has an extra 18 GPU cores and two extra CPU cores, it still can't play this back smoothly with no drop frames uh, without going into better performance. Now, when you put these into better performance, it plays it absolutely fine, depending on the actual tracked effects. So for example, like these YouTube ones, like, and, and stuff like that, like, like actual 3D models, both models basically struggle to play play them. And then when you start adding text tracked effects and stuff like that on top of it, both can't play it at better quality mode. However, both can play it at better performance. So don't think by going for the 16 inch M1 Max, you know, 32 core that you're gonna get much better 3D tracking uh, capabilities. You're, you're not. And I don't know if this is a, a limitation on M Tracker 3D and they haven't, you know, they aren't using the GPU or, or whatever, uh, but basically both can't play it. So even with that extra two core CPU, Again, it's not really doing anything. Both are struggling at the same points. So now I'm gonna track the clip and this is a 10 second 4K clip and we're gonna see how quickly each of them can do it. Okay, so we're gonna track the footage. So three, two, one and go, start. Finishing, which one is gonna win? Okay, so the 16 inch did it and there you go. So it was like a two second difference between the two in a one minute, uh, so yeah, basically one minute 30 for, for both uh, on a 10 second clip to 3D track. So as I mentioned earlier, editing on both has been a breeze and both don't seem to stutter at all with, you know, normal 4K, 10-bit, 422 footage, like whether that's in HEVC or H.264 formats, it seems to play it fine. And that's both in 4K, uh, 30, 24, 60 frames, it, it, it played it fine, right? When it comes to tracked uh, motion effects as well, uh, not 3D stuff, but with tracked effects, again, it made no difference, right? So you're not saving any times uh, in terms of, you know, how quickly it can motion track, you know, a certain object in frame. It made no difference on a two minute or nearly two minute tracked effect. The 14 inch is gonna be absolutely fine. Now I did mention earlier that I'm gonna show you a little trick that I bet a lot of you haven't even considered and you're considering buying, you know, these expensive MacBooks, the M1 Max and stuff like that, but you're not doing one simple thing which would save you the same amount of time and be a lot cheaper. And that is upgrading your SD cards. So I'm seeing a lot of videos from video editors, right? And they're talking about going for the M1 Max and stuff like this, and they're spending it because they need the fastest possible. Yet they're using UHS-1 cards. And it just blows my mind because the speeds on UHS-1 is like three times slower than UHS-2. And if you're transferring, let's say a 50 gigabyte file, that could take an extra sort of five to seven minutes on top which would, and if you've got a transfer, let's say not just one camera card, but you've got to transfer two or three or four like I do, well, that's gonna add up a lot more time than saving three or four minutes maximum, right, on the 16 inch. Whereas on the 14 inch, as long as you upgrade all of your SD cards, you're gonna save that time and more by just upgrading your SD cards. And you can upgrade to, you know, 256 gigabyte SD cards, uh, UHS-2 cards for like a hundred pounds, maybe a little bit more than that. And yeah, if you've got to buy, let's say like four of them, right? That's 400 pounds. But that is something that is gonna deliver you consistently faster transfer speeds, no matter where you are. So if you are a video editor, then please just upgrade your SD cards because trust me, it's going to be cheaper and it's going to make a hell of a lot of, uh, more difference than maxing out, you know, an M1 Pro, right? Or, or, or a 16 inch MacBook Pro. And just because your car, uh, your camera doesn't uh, record to UHS-2 speeds, don't worry about that because it's completely backwards compatible, but then when you enter it into a UHS-2 card reader, you're gonna get that full speed. So in my opinion, I think that if you're doing YouTube work or you're doing uh, client work, you know, at a semi-professional level or even at a professional level, I genuinely think that the base 14 inch is gonna be more than enough for you. And I really don't think it's worth going for the M1 Max unless you are really at that other end of, you know, the professional level where you're editing six and 8K videos 
where potentially you will see a bigger difference by using the 16 inch MacBook Pro. But anyway, this is always a discussion. So please leave a comment down below on whether you've picked up either the M1 Pro or M1 Max or both and how you got on with it with your workflows and stuff like that. But anyway, that's it for today. If you haven't already, please follow me on Twitter. And if you like this video, then please hit that like button. And also if you're new here, hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you get notified. But as always, if you want to watch more videos from me, you guys know what to do. There's two fantastic videos right over here. Go ahead, just click on one of them. Just do it now because they're fantastic. And I'll check you out in the next video. Bye.